Alexandria Bloom, and I'm sitting here with Kunal, and we are currently looking at Jan Mostart, Portrait of an African Man. Kunal, when was this painted? I think approximately from 1520 to 1530. Right, right. Um, there isn't much scholarly writing on this painting, and it's somewhat difficult to find information. Would you agree? I do agree. Uh, why is that, do you think? I think possibility that I would think of is... I think it's mostly the only painting of an African man during the Renaissance. I think that's yeah, good. that's true. It is quite possibly the only painting of an African man during the Renaissance. Uh, interestingly, uh, Jan Mostert uh, is actually from Harlem, so the Netherlands, and this painting really shows his worldly perspective and his interest in painting members of the court. Uh, it's likely that this man uh, was... was um, you know, a scholar, maybe an advisor, although his precise identity is unknown. Um, and uh, Mostert was an honorary painter at the court of Margaret of Austria, and uh, that's according to Black Africans in Renaissance Europe. And it's a really interesting fact because, you know, it wasn't, you know, customary that Africans were painted uh, in this way, so it's a it's a really interesting take. Um, what else is interesting about this painting, Kunal? The painting is on wood panel. This is a sign that was it was commissioned. Yeah, so that would also sort of suggest his importance um, and that he was probably the member of a court. Uh, in addition to his clothes, the man beard, man's beard also suggests his status. He carries a fancy purse uh, called a feldrichera, and it has a fleur-de-lis on it. So he could possibly be attached to some sort of French court, although there are different interpretations of that. And what are those? Different interpretations are that due to his bag that he's old, and it might signify that he is from Spain or Portugal, or at so, least the bag is. So there are different countries that he could possibly be yes, from. Yes, but no one actually knows. Right, because his identity is unknown. Right. Black Africans in Renaissance Europe also talks about the fact that he deviates from common stereotypes um, against Africans during this time. And it's, the book also suggests that he may be objectified by being dressed up in this way, um, maybe sort of like a puppet. It's unknown, however. Uh, he could very well be a part of the court, uh, as it is often assumed, due to his uh, dress. And there is some mystery surrounding African life during this time. Like I said, this is a very exotic portrait coming from a Dutch artist. And it is possibly, like we've said, the only Renaissance portrait of this kind featuring an African man during this time. Um, it demonstrates Mostart's unique appointments. And this brings us to our next painting, which is a portrait of the West Indies and also a very rare piece. So the next painting we're going to be looking at is called The West Indies, and it's, again, the same artist, John Mostar. This painting is considered one of Mostar's most famous artworks. What do you think about this, Alex? Well, looking at this painting, uh, it's very surreal. I think the odd shapes of the buildings and the sky even looks like it's kind of from a world made of jello. It's really yeah, it, interesting. It does, it does. It seems pretty surreal. I agree with <laughs> yes, that. Yes, it does. Doesn't it? It also looks like there's a lot of different things going on. There seem to be tribal people in the painting walking around. Almost looks like they're going to battle of some sort. There's some animals towards the front of the painting. Like in yeah, they the... they definitely look like some sort of tribal warriors. Just... Right. I mean, from what I can distinguish, there's a goat, maybe a horse of some sort, a lamb. Yeah, and the people are running. It looks like they're charging at something. What do you think right. that is? Some sort know. of fortress, maybe up in the. Maybe. I mm -hmm. think this might have to do with something like where the Europeans came to the Americas and invaded right. the Native Americans. And that's what they say. This may yeah. be one of the only portraits of America right. during that time. So the Native Americans, or savages as they were called by the Europeans, were depicted defending their land from the Europeans. Okay, so this is like an early, possibly early American um, kind of... I guess so. ...kind of landscape. Yeah, what was interesting about this, and this might not be true, but this is an interpretation that a lot of... Uh, contemporary uh, artist thought was that Mozart really didn't have an idea of how the Americas looked, but he just gave his sense of how it looked, but uh, his preconceived idea was pretty on dot as contemporary artists 
looked at the painting and interpreted it. Right, and I've heard I've heard similar uh, interpretations that most are most likely did not actually travel to the Americas. Right. Um, this was his interpretation. Yeah, he actually so. used preconceived ideas from oral teachings and books. Right. That could have been used. Sort of. Right, which kind of goes back to uh, the portrait of an African man because. You know, they're both very exotic pieces, um, possibly subjects Mostart himself wasn't very familiar with. You know, a man from Africa, this distant kind of land, uh, the West Indies, also distant and foreign to him. So very interesting that he's branching out in kind of a really international sense. Yeah, another idea the contemporary artists uh, contemplate about this painting is which invasion was it was considered in this art? So was it... Cortez, the, Cortez's gang that was in there, or was it Coronado? Either way, the Europeans were imperializing the native land to bring honor to Spain and call it its own territory. Right, so this very imperialistic idea. Um, also interesting, you know, an interpretation kind of, you know, of this these foreign people, as we've said. Yeah, you know, I think both of these works really show that desire on most art's part to paint things, paint the unknown. Um, and that's kind of a desire I think a lot of artists still have today, you know. Right, and this has inspired many artists today in terms of, like, for example, Chocolate Jesus. I mean, right. To can, uh, paint or sculpt contemporary African Americans, you know. So there's a lot of inspiration, especially in the Renaissance, but this has really right. gone far throughout right. history. It's really stood the test of time. Yeah, and it's arguably most art's most famous work. That is true. Mm-hmm.